Okay, so to start our proving ground, I'm going to start by going into my organized folder. It's a good time to make sure it's organized. I have exercise one, exercise two, assignment one, and assignment two. And I want to find my PSD. Very important to be able to identify it. That is the Photoshop document. That is the working format. And open that up with Photoshop. And all you need to do to do that is double click it. And you've already logged into Photoshop. If you need to check that you're logged in, you click on help. You see that it's your email account that's logged in. This is what your PSD assignment one should look like. It should have multiple layers. And now what I'm going to do is edit this a little bit and save it as a new name. So that it can be my proving ground number one. So the first thing I can get rid of is my sketch that's floating on the top. I can unlock it and delete it. I don't need that. I can also get rid of my sketch that's on the bottom. Everything else, and I can interrogate it. I need all of these. They are making up the image. Remember, you needed at least five. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven separate layers making up this landscape, which is great. That gives me opportunities to put not just a backdrop behind my creature, but all these kind of props in front of my creature. That's why we're thinking foreground, middle ground, background. Now I'm going to say file, save as, not save a copy, save as. And I'm going to completely rewrite the name because this is no longer assignment one. This is proving ground number one. And I'm not going to save it to my assignment one folder. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And I'm going to call it lollipop creature scape remember i always want you to put your name in your file types in your file names and a description so i'm navigating the save to the desktop then i'll hit function f11 to make sure i see it on the desktop here it is and i'm going to mark it as yellow because i'm working on it so that's my psd but now it is no longer assignment one. I've made assignment one as good as I could. Now I'm going to work with my creature scape. So now I open that up and it should say your name and proving ground at the top because I don't want anyone accidentally flattening or messing up assignment one. That said, we can make improvements to assignment one through this project and then maybe we save that out as we go. So what do I mean? Well, to make it better for my creature, maybe I take out some elements to kind of make more room for my creature. So we'll see. I'm going to go to the very top layer, and then I'm going to open up Assignment 2's folder. And Assignment 2 is finished. It's green. But instead of opening up the PSD, because the PSD for Assignment 2 will have multiple layers, right? We always want all those layers so that we can make changes later and improve this project. But the last step of assignment two was to make a duplicate layer that we merged and then trimmed. And I used a two pixel feather for that on my lasso tool. And I checked that with a gray background. And the only place it's a little fuzzy is the back of the neck where he has this really soft hair and at the top of the head and a little bit on his, on his tushy, right? That's where the softest texture is. Everything else is pretty sharply defined. The ears, the arms, the feet. So this is a good asset now to bring into another project. I turn off these other layers turn off the background, and I save this as a PNG, which I've already done, because that's what I turned in for assignment two. So instead of the PSD, I'm looking for my finished PNG. PNG is 
the type of online format that takes up a lot less memory. It flattens all of your layers together, but it supports transparency. So you see how it's gray behind my creature here and it's white behind my creature there. That's because there are no pixels behind my creature. So when I drag that clean PNG into my landscape, like so, on top of everything else, it comes with clean edges. All right. And now that creature, and it's just going to kind of fill up the space because these are both at least 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. Right now, everything is very printable in terms of its resolution. Now, I have to decide how is my creature going to be in this environment. And the first thing I do is decide how many layers deep should it go. So I know that its foot is not in front of this foreground lollipop. So I'm going to start moving it down. And I can do that by dragging it. Or I can do it with the shortcut I like for moving layers. Uh, command left bracket will move it down through the layers. So now I have it down behind these three foreground elements. And I might decide I don't even want all those foreground elements for my creature scape. You know, maybe they're distracting. And then I can keep moving it back behind some of these middle middle ground elements. And then I realize, no, it's hidden a little too much. So I'm going to put it in front of the cake pops, in front of the ice cream, and then I might decide if I wanted to keep it at this size, to either remove the cupcake tower or to move it a little bit. Right, do something else with it. So it reveals my character. Now this is kind of an easy trick to hide your character's feet just by overlapping it with foreground. But what if I wanted to instead remove all these foreground elements and I'm going to play with posing my creature to fit the environment, right? Angling the anatomy. And after I've angled the anatomy, then I'll work on the lighting. So I want to put its feet amongst these ice creams, right? They're like boulders of ice cream. And I'm going to shrink my character a little bit. How do I do that? It's still notice a smart object. So any free transform I do to it with command T is going to be the best possible resolution because it's going from my original file. And not only can I scale it down, I can do things like warp it slightly. If you warp it a lot, you'll lose quality. Just to kind of situate its feet in a way that might work a little bit better. Now I'm going to situate that foot squarely onto that ice cream cone. And then maybe I'll warp it a little bit this way. Just tugging a little bit so it's leaning forward. And so its wing is overlapping these cake pops. Like so. Okay, now I'm going to teach you the first new skill. I've got my creature here. I want to pose this creature like it's a puppet. This is very helpful for animation, very helpful for making its anatomy match. Because my anatomy does not naturally match. You see how it looks really awkward on that foot? So what I'm going to do is I'll do it with a duplicate just so I can show you the difference. Command J on my smart object of my creature. I can mark it green just so I know this is what's called a hero element in a compositing scene because it's the character and then I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to puppet warp and this is different than regular warp if you did a good job cutting out your creature puppet warp will put a polygon grid wireframe over your creature 
It doesn't turn it into a 3D model, but it's imitating a 3D model. This doesn't do anything. <laughs> what you need to do is decide where you want your creature to be pinned. So treat it like a butterfly that you're putting in a display case. And I want to keep this foot here, all three toes. That's right. But everything else, I can move. So what do I want to move? I want to be able to move this hip, so I pin it there. I want to be able to move this wing at the elbow, so I pin it there. I want to be able to move it. No, actually, I don't want to move that yet. So now, if I actually grab these pins, think of it like a grommet doll, I can hinge it. And you see how my the foot that I like the placement of stays put. Make sense? Now this is just previewing it, but I find the position I want on that back foot, and now I can use that same idea to lock this hip, and then change this foot, and position it. Maybe I change the knee. And now, it looks a little bit more squarely standing on those ice creams. And I haven't corrected the color. I haven't done anything with the lighting. I've just tried to fix the angle of the anatomy. So what's the difference? I did it on a duplicate. This is what it looked like before. Right? Pretty off balance. Just using a little bit of puppet warp, even while it's still a smart object, it does it as what's called a smart filter that looks more believable. If I like that, then I can get rid of my first, my first option to save memory. And then I can hit Command S. Okay, the next thing I want to do yeah, I think that helps is I can play with the foreground elements in front of my creature. And maybe I don't love the full part of the foot, even though I tried to make it match. So maybe I just use this foreground element to mask a little bit of it. This is what I call relative perspective. That we get a sense of depth from some things being in front of other things. Right? So that can help. Just like if I put my creature behind the cake pops, that naturally kind of sets him on the ground. But I'm trying to teach you the skills of making the creature actually match. So in the corner here, maybe I take this element and I push it down. Just to the corner like that. So I can still see the feet. I can even angle this. This is playing with our assets. And kind of set it down just so it covers a little bit of that other foot. Now the goal is for your creature to take up 25% of the scene. And mine does. Mine takes up almost half of the scene. And then I might take other elements. I'm not going to be using this one there. I'm going to turn on auto select for the move tool. And then I might move this into the corner to improve the composition. And I could even play with pushing it behind the kick pops. So this is the advantage that having all of these different layer assets gives you. I can take this cupcake because I don't love this soft edge, and I'm just going to flip it horizontally. So this is really interrogating the assets we've already built. And maybe I'll stretch it a little bit. There we go. And then sometimes you have to clean up an edge. So since I'm showing this foreground a little bit more, I'm going to use my two pixel feather lasso 
and this is easiest with a tablet. I'm just using a 